I saw the mountains. I was afraid to say your name. Oh, Shaka, it's Brian. Come over here. Sit next to me, please. It's O O shock. O shock. Yeah. Yeah. So welcome, welcome to Lisbon, welcome to Portugal. Oh, uh, and maybe because I'm an actor, I would like to start this meet and greet, not with your career as a musician, as a singer, as a songwriter, but as an actor, because you started when you were eight years old. This is true. This is true. Oh, it's going to be yes. We're I'm going not, to go to oh acting. Oh my God! No, please uh, help me here. But the interesting thing is that you played the same role for almost 10 years for an actor that's almost like eternity, no? It, it is. It, it was half my life by the time I finished uh, because <laughs> I was 17 when I, when I finished uh, playing that role. It was a, a TV soap in Ireland called Fair City. And uh, I don't know, what do you think of Fair City? It's great. It's class. Oh, it's great. I love it. It's very, like, it's a very Dublin thing, you know? Um, it's uh, set in it's set in Dublin city in a in a fantasy town called Carrickstown, um, and there's a lot of drama. So I was kind of that test teenage child, um, so I went through like a sex scandal as like a underage sex thing. Um, there was conflict between my parents uh, in the show, so I'm surprised I came out of it with my with my sanity. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I was there for nine years. Yeah. So you didn't leave. Your real life, but you kind of lived it there. So I kind of lived a double life. I kind of lived two lives. Yeah, but you were like, okay, enough calling the producers. Kill me, kill me. I want to play different roles. I want to be in other projects. You were a bit tired of it. No, I actually the the reason why I left is um, I got an opportunity to join a band when I was seventeen, and. I was promised everything. Like in the music industry, people come to you and they'll say, oh, well, we're, we're going to put loads of money into you, we're going to get the best studios and all this type of stuff. So they promised me uh, this lifestyle. So I left school and I left my, my acting job to pursue the music because music was my actual passion at the time. Yeah. Um, and then after a year, I kind of realized, you know, these guys weren't really honest in their promises. And I went back to school. Um, but then I kind of found the love for writing, and I, and I started writing songs. Yeah, okay. That's an answer. Oh, yeah, there you go. So, Ireland is Ireland, of course. And you know, with the most wins Eurovision Song Contest, seven. Hi, the lads. Oh, hi. Come on, Ireland! <laughs> <laughs> so, you won in, in 1970, 80, 87, 94, 96. Do your um, research. Hmm? Do your research. No, I like Eurovision. <laughs> thank you very, very much. Actually, I really like it. And uh, I have to quote you here, because you said that you are very proud because uh, you're representing Ireland and you plan doing Ireland proud by bringing a song and performance to Eurovision that we haven't seen since the days of rock and roll kids. And that was pretty few years ago. You said that because it's your favorite Eurovision song ever, or is there any other reason for it? I really admire that song for being an honest story and um, I actually got the chance to sit down with Charlie McGettigan and Paul Harrington last week um, in RTE and I was chatting with the guys and it was just a, such a surreal moment. We played rock and roll kids and I sung a third part harmony on top of it. Um, for me that song is just like an honest depiction of nostalgia and it doesn't sound sad, you know. Charlie was saying to me that he's asked to perform that at weddings but it's a sad song, you know? It's like, it's like longing for what you had in the yeah. past. So yeah. it's what we have with this song, it's quite similar. We've got an up-tempo feel, but the lyric is quite sad, you know? Um, and that's kind of what I try to do as a songwriter, is create a contrast between the music and the lyric that, uh, that shows uh, the, the good and the bad that uh, can occur within relationships. Can we ask you to sing us a little bit? Uh, sure, if the girls will sing it with me. You like rock and roll kids? Oh, let's introduce oh, rock, rock and roll kids. Yeah, no, and together oh. we will just do a showcase here. Yeah, I wish I brought my guitar. I should have brought my guitar, but uh, we could do a bit of together. Acapella, huh? Acapella. We were, we were the rock and roll kids. Rock and roll was all we did. Listening to those songs on the radio. I was yours and you were mine And that was once upon a time 
Now we never seem to rock and roll anymore. Oh. Thank you. This is a beautiful song. Yeah, yeah, right, right. it's really a beautiful song. Now, let's introduce just, I always forgot that part. Who do we have on stage? So, we've got Alan, one of uh, Ireland's like um, best dancers at the moment. And then we've got Kev, who's actually in London at the moment, but he's another Irish dancer. We've got everyone's Irish on, on the team. Um, and then we got Remy, a uh, beautiful vocalist. We've got Janet Grogan, who's been at Eurovision before. So is Alan. And then we got Claire on at the bottom. Hey, welcome. Now, I would just, I would just like to ask a final question, because Dan, they have the opportunity to, uh, to ask their questions about your performance, because songs, and your song as a, as a story. And on stage, I was watching your rehearsal, and sometimes I go Pikachu. You know, yeah. That's Israel, actually. But um, you are singing, and you are looking at the lady playing the piano. So that's a story. But then there's another story on stage. They are dancing around what could be a garden bench, uh, I don't know. And when you released the music video, okay, it was just them. So, oh, this is just a song about two guys. No, 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 this could be a song about whatever, whoever. And what is the story you are seeing on stage? Your story, their story, everyone's story. So the idea from the beginning was to show that love is love, no matter whether that's between two guys, two girls, or a girl and a guy. So what we decided is, um, when we picked the two guys, they were chosen because they're the best two dancers that I know. <laughs> so, and they've got good chemistry, they've known each other for a long time. Um, and when I released the video, I realized that not a lot of people think along the same lines as liberals do in Ireland. And there's a little bit of controversy surrounding there being two guys. So, what I wanted to bring to the stage was, it could be two guys, or it could be me and Claire Anne, or it could be anything, but love is love in the end of the day, and there's ups and downs. As you see in the performance, the two guys are resting their heads against each other, and it's kind of this kind of unsure moment in the relationship, but then they're dancing and they're having a good time, so it's to show that journey and the ups and downs that love can bring. Oh, thank you. And the good thing, it's for, it's for all of us. It's for everyone, yeah, of course, you know, it's like, it's important to to, uh, to kind of show that there's not there's not enough um, gay videos, let's say, or like everything seems to be between a, a guy and a girl these days, and that's just not the modern world that we live in. So I think it's good to uh, to just give that a little bit of an acknowledgement. That's right. Thank you. Now you. Oh my God. You over there. Hello. 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 My name is Michael and I'm from EurovisionWorldRecord.com. Um, we all know that Ireland hasn't qualified for the grand final until 2013. Does this put pressure <laughs> on you? I don't think it puts pressure on me. I think it puts pressure on the head of the delegation. <laughs> <laughs> That's my <laughs> answer. <laughs> I just, we, we have a job to do, we have to go up there and have fun and perform the song that was chosen and to represent the country and I think as long as we can do that and get our job done, people will be able to receive it and uh, know that we're having a good time. I think that's the most important thing. Um, but I probably should feel pressure and nerves, but I don't because I'm just really enjoying the process. I think I speak for everyone when I say that, we're all just having a really good time. So yeah, no, no pressure, no pressure. Thank you very much. Next question. Yes, over here. Peace. <laughs> okay. Hi, Ryan. Alistair Birch from Eurofile. Hi. There are a lot of socially conservative countries in Europe still. Um, in Eurovision, we publish the votes of the jurors with their names and their exact votes. Oh, yeah. Which is it's not a secret ballot. Um, what would you say to, 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 to the public um, in, in maybe the socially conservative uh, countries who, are th who, who would like to vote for your song but are a bit concerned? Well, I think that's quite political and uh, I, would, I would just say to remember that you know, the world is moving forward and 
you kind of, you've got two options. You either stay where you are, or you move with the times. Um, and that would be my answer, pretty much. And a very good answer. Yeah, really. <laughs> Next question. Here. The mic. Thank you so much, Kirill Peripelkin, Gitarka, Mordovia, Russia. Uh, some months ago, you tweeted about uh, part of your video in Russia. Uh, where uh, you got this information? Is it fake news or you have any facts about it? Thank you for answer and good luck in competition. Thank you very much. You. So as we all know, there's a lot of things that gets, get thrown around Twitter and I saw this video and it was basically a, a news report. And actually my mom sent it to me. She's like, Ryan, check this out. They're thinking of banning your video on Russia. So I saw the video and it basically said because of Russia's anti-gay propaganda um, that the video might be shown. So I shared it. So it was just news that came to me and then you know I passed it on to my followers. So whether that was fake news or not, I don't know. But it was a news story that came out and I just passed it on, relaying the information. Okay. Next question. Yeah, over here now. The mic, please. Oh, it's you. Hey, honey, how are you? Hello, Ryan, I'm your team. Hello, how are you? I'm Sebastian from Destination Norwegian Poland. First of all, before I ask, I would like to tell you that I like your song so much. It's put my emotional strings, I really like it. A great job. Thank you very much. <laughs> Still, I want to some kind of continue the last question, because I also trying to see for your social media activity and I saw this news about this um, probably banned video on the Russia but it was taken from the YouTube channel with 120 people and after that we saw the, your photos with um, some face changes with Vladimir Putin etc etc and I'm really a bit confused this is your idea to make some kind of social activity or you just were standing of course we are not we are everything not agree for humiliating any people because of his sexual orientation. We are agree about it, for sure. But this, the, 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 but these pictures, these moves, you are trying to make some uh, concern about LGBT situation, or you try to make some... I'm sorry that I'm asking about that, but are you trying to make some commercial for your song and try to put it, elevate it my, maybe more in social media and Eurovision fans on? No, it's a good question. And I think um, since the video came out, it's it's good that this conversation has started because there, as you, a, lo a lot of the questions seem to be about these socially conservative countries that are involved in Eurovision. And, you know, I think when, you, when it comes to creating an art piece, I always think, um, you know, you gotta kind of, you gotta uh, think how are you going to move people? How are people going to feel when they watch it or when they listen? And that's all I try to do with the video. And, um, I think once you're creating a conversation by putting out your art, um, then I don't think you're doing anything wrong. So yeah, that's, that's my answer. Thank you. More questions. Now about the song, about... Yeah, <laughs> over here, please. Is this song writer about nucleus, about... Nu is nucleus the writer? Yeah, the nucleus, yeah. Uh, Michael from a Eurovision.com. Uh, this is my daughter and we live in Nebraska, and I guess what I want to ask you is, um, while I was stalking on, you, on Facebook, you, um, you have a lot of pictures from St. Louis and um, Minnesota and fly, flyover states. So it's very unusual for uh, someone to come to these states. Can you tell me what that was all about? Yes, um, I was on tour from the start of January up until like mid-March. Um, I had just learned that I'd be coming to Eurovision, so I'd already taken this job on tour with a, a group called Dublin Irish Dance. Um, so it's like 16 piece. Um, Performing tour that goes all across the states. I think we went to 35 different states or something like that. So we got to see um, all different places in the states, and it was a, a, a really good experience. Actually, our sound engineer is with us on this tour, so I got to meet a lot of cool people, and a lot of the cast will be coming over. We became such a tight knit group that um, a lot of the cast will be coming over here to Please see me, to, see. to see me. Oh, so I'm looking forward to seeing them. I haven't seen them since the tour, so um, that was the reason for being over in the States. Next question. Uh, you already asked one? No? Yeah? May I give the opportunity? Okay, thank you very much. Yes, please. 
Hello Ryan, uh, Keith Mills from Ireland, one of the Irish fans here. Um, 17 years ago, I mean, in a similar room like this, I was asking questions of the Irish Eurovision representative. <laughs> Gary, you're shocked, must say. Oh yeah. <laughs> and um, he's your uncle, I believe. So I was just wondering, have you spoken to him and has he given you any advice in terms of how to handle the Eurovision bubble, the media, stage tips or whatever like that, just to get you in familiar with what goes on at the contest? Yeah, I think uh, my uncle Gary is a little bit, um, he's actually my godfather as well, I'm very close to Gary, um, and he's jealous that I'm getting a lot more uh, things that he did when he represented Ireland. You know, I'm after getting a pair of Gucci runners, you know, he never got that. So. I think he's more jealous than he is um, uh, than anything else, but uh, he's been giving me a few bits of advice. And the, the advice I got from Charlie McGettigan and Paul Harrington as well was just enjoy it and enjoy your time with the people you're here with. Um, and I'm trying to take that on board as much as I can. Um, but yeah, Gary is, he's got a very dry sense of humour. So he basically said to me, just don't try too hard. Because I think he feels like he might have tried too hard when he went and sung. Uh, 17 years ago, so that was a good little piece of advice, I think. Thanks, Keith. Final question. Oh my god, what should I do? <laughs> you go. Okay. And then you will answer about the tattoo issue. What about my group? <laughs> any, any questions for these lovely people? <laughs> Actually, I have a question about the song. It's Jamie from Radio International. Can you tell us what was the motivation for co-writing the song and how you went about to write this song together with Laura and Mark? And how long did it take for you? Yes, um, so Laura Elizabeth is a good friend of mine for years and so is Mark Kaplis, but we hadn't written together before. I like to co-write. My very first EP, there were just songs written by me, but then I soon found out that co-writing was the best way to like collaborating with different writers is the best way for ideas to, to ferment. And um, The Nucleus is a songwriting hub in Ireland and they brought myself, Laura and Cappy in to the hub in Dublin and we were told to, you know, maybe try and write a song about um, togetherness. And uh, I basically wrote the first couple of lyrics in a coffee shop just waiting for the guys to arrive and it was all about just like drifting like two icebergs um, and that was kind of the theme because um, when two icebergs are drifting it's kind of like you need the tides to turn in order to get them back together so um, that was the first idea and then Mark and Laura helped to really get that going and the song was written in about an hour so um, it was, it's, and I said to Charlie again to, to mention Charlie beginning and I told him this and he said yeah well the best ones usually are so the best ones come very quickly with, with less thought more right. flow. You have anything to ask them? Maybe dance, read a dance for us? I don't know. I, I'd like to ask That's the guys a question. How do you feel the reaction has been since uh, the video? And how do you feel about that? Well, I think it's great. I just think it's universal and it kind of covers every aspect of love. Because personally, like I'm gay and I think it really stands out in that aspect. And then the whole thing you were saying about you and Claire on the piano, it kind of ties in that way as well. I love it. I think it's a great response and it's a lovely message for the modern world. Yeah, I think just to echo what you said, like when once you're provoking some conversation about things, I just think that's the best way for everyone to move forward and hear other people's ideas and just, yeah. So I think that's the best thing that we've done with the video is just provoke that. And that's what you felt when you said that you wanted to perform an honest piece on the Eurovision stage. Yeah, it was important, and I've said, said that, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, and, and I've said this before with um, Salvador last year. I was going there. Was it was it was a huge inspiration for me to want to get involved? Um, I think you know, since my uncle Gary performed for Ireland 17 years ago, we haven't had much success, um, and I think. Salvador kind of opened the door to uh, an, uh, the older realm of it being a lot more about the song than about the... So you think music is not fireworks, music is feeling, that's what Salvador is. Exactly, and that, that was all feeling. So that's what I want to try and, I want to try and uh, connect with, with the audience this time and, um, and make them feel what I'm feeling when I'm performing. That was the moment you decided you wanted to come, you wanted to, come to your original? Yeah, my mom has been saying for years as a songwriter, you know, enter a song. And I just, I haven't. Um, 
in the past maybe five or six years of being like a professional songwriter. So this year it was uh, it was a no brainer because I think it's uh, it's really Salvador's turned the Eurovision on its head, and um, if a song like that can win um, and people can connect to that, then I think it's uh, I think the, we have a chance of. of you learn how to, how to sing. Uh, you know how to oh, how? Oh my God! You know how to sing some of song. I don't know the lyrics. I'm terrible with language, but the melody is just a. Little, da, 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 da. It's it's just beautiful. Ryan from Ireland. Thank you very 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 much. Thank you. Thank you.